Hello everyone and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm Notorious Dub and today I'm going to be going over the biggest mistake or missed opportunity that I see a ton of people doing that are making them fall short of their full potential with their specific agent for every single agent in the game. Now, Valorant is a game where seconds can be the difference between winning and losing a game, and any optimization that you can do to make you that little bit better can have a huge impact on your gameplay. And these sometimes small fixes to your game are the things that pros have nailed down to a science, and it makes them look so effortless and effective no matter what agent they're on. So this list of one thing that you're doing wrong on every agent is designed to help you up your game, and no matter who you main, there is a tip for you in this video. So let's get started with one common mistake I see people making for every agent. But as always, before we hop into it, we have to have our question of the day, which today is what is one thing that you changed in your gameplay that instantly made you a more effective player? Personally, I'm actually going to be covering the thing that comes to mind for me in this video, which is how to peek with Ray's satchels. Now, I'm not going to lie, I was one of those flights fanboys early on that always wanted to go flying through the site, but that's not always the best way to peek. In fact, you can peek with your satchel way faster and more effective than any other peek in the game, so make sure you stay tuned for that tip. But as always, we all have a ton of different experiences, and that's exactly why I want to hear from you. Make sure you leave the biggest change that you've made to your game that made you more effective in the comments down below. Now to start with, let's be honest, when we're talking about Phoenix, everyone is picking Phoenix for his flashes and his ultimate. That way they can allow them to pick up a ton of kills, but Phoenix's flame wall is the most underused and highly effective ability in the entire game. Phoenix wall on post plant is a godsend because it can shroud you while you tap the bomb and get it half, or completely shroud your location and give you a ton of area to flash through and peek. And a phoenix flashing through his flame wall is one of the scariest attacks in the entire game because it's so difficult to tell or even predict where he's going to come out at. Phoenix wall is also like a juiced up viper wall because it does more damage and it's more convenient because you can split a bomb site in half or just cut off the most common enemy peeking locations to take that bomb site initially. But regardless of how you decide to use your flame wall, use it because it's the one controller ability that the most powerful duelist in the game has in his arsenal, which is really what sets him apart from the crowd and makes him more effective round to round than any other duelist agent in the game. And remember, if you're serious about improving, then go to skillcapped.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. It's also backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcapped. Improve that KDA and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcapped.com. Link is in the description below. And then we have Sage. Now, Sage Wall is her absolute staple ability because it can completely stop a push, make an area unusable for nearly an entire round, or give you an incredibly unpredictable peak. And that is the way I'm not seeing many Sages actually use their ability. We saw Tens play Sage a lot recently, and he absolutely destroys the competition with this technique. Now, I get it, Sage Wall is one of the best abilities in the game for getting a plant down. And if you're playing Icebox, you might want to keep the wall in your back pocket if you're attacking, just in case. Now, Sage Wall actually gives you the perfect height to peek over a smoke that's blocking your vision and give you that little tiny headshot peek angle that no one's going to notice you peeking over the top of. And it also gives you access to the most unpredictable angles, making shots against you extremely hard to hit. And not to mention, it's free kills if the enemy does decide to spray at your wall and break it without realizing that you're actually on top of it. And then we have the Sova players, with the recon and nerd darts that give your team all of the intel in the world. But let's be honest, on attacker's side, at the beginning of the round, how often has that recon dart, as soon as the biphase barrier drops, ever made a difference? Probably very little, because you don't have anyone in position to make a play off of the intel that you're gathering, unless it's some weird round where the enemy team does some cheese stuff and you manage to catch it off. So instead of putting your recon dart on cooldown early and having to wait for it to come back up to be useful for the site take, wait until your team has a little bit of pressure outside the area you want to recon dart. And that allows them to capitalize off the information or the movement that you cause they can catch somebody out. And the same goes for your owl drone. Don't waste it solo. Wait until your team needs the info or is available to follow it in because your owl drone is one of the best entry fraggers in the game because even if it dies, you're not losing a teammate. And for the race players out there, I know flights has made a big impact on the community Community, and now everyone is throwing their satchels at their feet and jumping on it. But Ray's satchel is actually the strongest peeking ability in the entire game, and instead of throwing it on the ground and where it launches you in the air and makes you inaccurate upon landing, throw it on a wall next to you, wait for your gun to be ready to fire, and explode your bass plaque to electric slide your way around the corner, wide peeking way faster than the enemy expects, and allowing you to get accurate shots off way faster than they will be able to react to. And then we have one of the most powerful jet techniques in the entire game 
updraft peaks. Now, Jet has the uncanny ability to updraft and double updraft above walls that enemies would never have to look above traditionally, most notably on A Site Ascent and A Site Unhaven. These updraft peaks are incredible for picking off an enemy out of position or completely denying an enemy plant. But keep in mind, at higher elos, these peaks will be a lot easier to read, but still incredibly difficult to stop. It's really just an aim battle at that point, but you can always pull these off in coordination with a teammate flash or a retake strategy. But either way, with the high kill potential Jet has and with the high damage that her knives do, you should be utilizing these niche kill opportunities whenever they come about. And of course, I have to have one for my Viper players. It's one of my absolute favorite ability uses that I've seen almost no one using. Spawn Peak Mollies. These are snake bite tosses that land right where the enemy could peek out from at the beginning of the round. That way you catch them off guard running to their location, the puddle lands at their feet, and you can mow them down with a vulnerable debuff, making them easy targets to pick off. These are best on ascent mid peaks, bind short peaks, and haven mid peaks, because all of them are so high traffic and consistent peaks that you can cause havoc on enemies that really don't expect it coming because no one is doing this yet. And then for the recently buffed Yoru, I see way too many people trying to make the highlight reel Yoru TP plays that are honestly just a little bit too predictable. But instead of being the hardcore entry fragger or the YOLO TP Yoru, throw your teleport into position and play the second man into the site, trading out for your entry fragger and when the site take is in full swing, then you can flash and teleport to your area deep in the back of site and force the enemies to have the incredible game sense to recognize what happened, full 180 and hit the headshot in the less than one second it takes for you to pull your gun out, which really just doesn't happen. And honestly, this is an incredibly difficult technique to counter, and what I believe would be the technique that caused him to shift into the meta if people picked up on this chaotic mid-round sight take strategy. And for Brimstone, I have one huge temp that I'm honestly not even seeing in my Radiant or Immortal games most of the time. And if you're not using this, you're losing a ton of rounds that you could be closing out with ease, and that's combining a molly lineup with your ultimate. Now, currently Brimstone's ultimate lasts for 4 full seconds, and his incendiary charge lasts for 8.3 seconds, and with a 7 second and defuse timer, that's a full 19 seconds it will take before the enemy is actually able to defuse the bomb. Maybe they don't know any lineups or maybe they just don't know it exists, but I see a ton of people that don't use this combination. But if you have a couple of teammates alive that can stall the enemies out from getting to the bomb in the first place, it makes getting the plant down while you have your ultimate available pretty much a free round for your team. But unfortunately, I just don't see many brimstones that know Molotov lineups, and even less of them use it effectively on post plants in coordination with their ultimate. And then we have Cypher. At this point, everyone knows what Cypher does, and almost everyone knows to break the trips or jet dash through them before you enter the bomb site. But there are a ton of off angles and niche spots that you should be putting your trips to to pick up free kills when the enemies will have no idea that there could be a tripwire there, like this spot near the door on the A bomb site of Ascent. Now, nearly every team knows to close the door to give themselves time to take the bomb to site and get the plant down but putting a trip in this corner gives you one of the best ways to counter that strategy. And there are a ton of cheesy lineups just like this one, like the ones that go on the outside of Hookah on Bind that suspend the enemies in midair that you need to work into your arsenal if you want to pick up a ton of free kills. And then for the Sky players, I know you love your flashes and you want to use your dog to clear out corners, but you are playing the best agent to support your team running into a bomb site, and you need to be spamming your utility early round to get you there. Once you get the plant down though, often Sky is just too slow to prevent a retake. So use your flashes early, take your time walking up, let your teammates go ahead and fly your birds high above, deep into the bomb site, that way you can flash and cause problems. These three flashes force the enemies to look away and they're able to blind the enemies for six seconds. And six seconds in Valorant is a lifetime. So spam those flashes early instead of saving them for later, get your team on site and trust them to do the rest. And not to mention, this makes Sky a great agent for watching the flank, because she can get all of her use out of her abilities early round, and since she's already behind the team, she can just turn around and clear out the enemies that are pushing from behind. And then with Omen, I see way too many people playing to flash one specific area because they might think that someone's playing there. When Omen blind goes so far that can, can cover a ton of distance and flash so many different hot areas at once. Like on Haven, in pro play, every time a team works up C-Long, you will always see the Omen tuck into cover and flash towards logs. That's because it clears out
out the box on the outside of garage, the entrance to garage, logs, and the entire right side of back site all at once. So as the Omen player on the team, stop trying to make flashy TP plays and entry behind your own flash. Instead, tuck yourself off to the side so you don't flash your team and line up as many hot spots as you can. Think of it as a mini game. This will give you a ton more success and lead to a ton of extra one rounds for you and your teams because you're using your most effective ability as valuable as possible. But for you Killjoy players, I see so many people dropping Darren and Lair utility at the entrances for information that an enemy could be playing in the area. And that's what you should be doing, but keep in mind when your utility is destroyed, it isn't doing anything for you anymore. So instead of throwing your utility in the entranceway, line it up so that an enemy has to overextend to actually trigger it. That way you have utility to swing off of if the enemies do decide to enter and can pick up free kills off of the chaos that is caused by having to deal with your utility, instead of just allowing them to clear it early. And the same goes for your turret. If you don't have plans to swing off the contact that it takes, tuck it off deep in a corner. That way the enemies have to fully clear and deal with it whenever they fully commit to the site. That leaves one more thing to cause them problems, instead of just using it for early information and then getting no more use out of it when they destroy it. And then for the rain is out there. Now I know this is a risky thing to say, because we all need our entry fragger there and we all want our defenders not to die early. But let's be honest here, Reyna excels at being a duelist that dominates 1v1s way more than she excels at full on leading the charge into the bomb site because her flashes can be shot by multiple people and instantly destroyed. So instead of rushing headfirst into the enemy every round, play tactically and look for those 1v1s occasionally. Because your ability to overextend and get out of a bad situation, combined with the ability to actually heal after a close 1v1, makes the kills that Reyna can pick up way more effective than any other agent, because she can still be useful in the round afterwards. So not every round, but every once in a while, be that lurking Reyna that confuses the enemy team, or peek those unexpected off angles that can get you 1v1s, instead of trying to full commit to a site or full stop an enemy from taking sites. Look for those 1v1s. And finally, for you Breach players, your ultimate actually knocks enemies up and stops them from planting or defusing a bomb. And this takes playing for retake or stopping a retake to the next level, because you can let the enemies tap or even give them a little bit of time on the plant or defuse and ult out of wherever you're playing with full confidence that you've stopped the plant and can take your time finishing out the round from there. I know so many Breaches that just love their flashes and always want to be in swinging distance of them, but when your ult is up, take the time to fall back a bit and wait for the perfect opportunity to completely turn the tide of the round in your favor by ulting the planter off of their spot. And remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcapped.com. Link is in the description below. But I hope you've learned something from this video, and if you did, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notification bells on, because we here at Skillcapped have a ton more comprehensive premium guides coming your way that you're going to want to stay up to date with so you can stay ahead of the pack. And as always, I want to thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us, and I'm Notorious Dub, signing off.